One of the things that we need to do is always expose the dogs to what we think triggers bad behavior. It's not magic here, so we have to teach the dog. So if the dog reacts poorly to the sight of another dog or a squirrel or a cat or a bird or a person or a bicycle, the only way to fix that is expose the dog to it, correct the behavior, and encourage good behavior. So we have obviously a little doggy here, and we're going to bring out uh, Athena who is supposedly reactive to dogs. Let's see. So her ears are forward. You can see that. You don't have to be a ba animal behavior. So we're not going nose to nose. That would be ridiculous. But we do insist that the dog don't pull on the leash. Ashley's relaxed. And there's no tension on the leash, or a little tension. So this is a process. Don't forget, we're only halfway through this. We're only halfway through the process, and that's better than it was. So come back again, and then, good. So we praise, you have to work this out in the dog's head. There can't be tension. This is why we don't use the harness, that automatically. The little white dog, now she's closing the gap. She's about six feet away, and now, the dog is a little happier. We'll circle around a little. Correct bed. Relax. Praise. Love. And there we are. So this is the beginning of this. And then if Sam just walk a little bit, that might trigger the dog to get nervous. And this is, by the way, and then come by me, Sam. By the way, this is not aggression. This is fear. So you have to, that's good right there. So you have to distinguish fear from disobedience. So Athena's not wanting to kill the dog, but she's afraid of maybe the dog. You can tell by her behavior. So that's good for to now with Athena's introduction of walking with dogs. This isn't magic. Sam's relaxed. This little dog's relaxed. Ashley's relaxed. There's no tension. We're not holding dog back on harnesses. We're done. Okay, continuing our training. One thing that dogs shouldn't do is become possessive over their food, right? Because it's really not their food, it's our food. And what I would ask, and, and Spar Spartacus has that tendency reported by the owner that he's food possessive. So what we have to do is teach him not to possess things and release it when we tell him to. It can be a very dangerous thing, particularly for children, uh, if they don't know precisely what they're doing. And I would further add that this standard should apply to all dogs. So it's not that Spartacus is bad and the Athena is good so she can possess the food. The same standard has to apply. So I, here I have what we would call a high value treat, right? This is like a gnarly, what the hell we call this thing? I don't know, whatever it is, the dogs love it. Shin bone. Let's see, if it works, I might use it here for my leg. Um, if it, If it's high value, they, we would call it, right? Meaning that this is real primal. And this is the things that people get bit over. So we're gonna give Ashley, not me, is gonna give the dog, watch how she corrects him for not taking okay. it. Okay. Good, now she allows him to okay. take it. And I'm gonna come close. And then my hand is here. Then she, this is how we do this. Now, we don't give it to him and let him go under a couch or a kitchen table with it. He will bite us. Now, when we're ready, Ashley is going to tell him something and he's going to stop. Let's watch what it is. Like he's eating this. This is primal stuff. Spartacus, leave it. Uh -uh. Now, that's pretty amazing. She's not pulling the, 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 the treat away or the, the bone away. Uh -uh. She is teaching him that she, he has to spit it out. Spartacus, okay. Good boy. Good and this is a process. She just told him it's okay to eat it. Watch it. Look at how relaxed she is, though. This is what people have to understand. Now he's got that. We'll see how this goes. This is good. So she's just going to now, and you can see the correction. Now he's actually got the knuckle. So he's really going to town. So this is where, where people get problems. They don't realize a dog has a bone. They come up behind the dog and the dog turns around and bites. So here she's going to give him an opportunity and he might not take it. Let's see what happens. Spartacus, leave it. And then heal away. Leave it. Heal. Good. So rather than reach down and take that, she so that was kind of amazing. If you get bit by this dog, that means you've done something wrong. If you reach down and take my steak out of my off my plate, you're making a mistake. So that was a, really pretty good. So he's doing good in this regard. One of the top ten rules we have: all this takes place in a leash and collar. This leash and collar stays on when the dogs are inside and outside. 
if we took that leash off at this point in our training, we have no way of reinforcing this. This is hugely important. Uh, Ashley's done a great job with the food possession, and that's what becomes dangerous. So the bottom line is the dog can be taught not to and respect leadership if you're in that position. A 10-year-old child has no business taking food away from a dog, period. Uh, and you can see him thinking, and she's not pulling away. That's the important part. We don't play games here. And uh, Spartacus is doing a great job, and that's good. We're gonna go see what Athena does with this. Okay, so just so you can see the contrast in the different dogs, and this is why each dog has to be de delicately handled differently. Every dog is different. So what you do to Athena, we don't do to Spartacus, and vice versa. So we can't get her to take this. So she's not possessive regarding, oh my God, pit bull breed, whatever. The Samoy, whatever Athena is, or Spartacus is, is very food aggressive. So. This is how it's the opposite approach. We can't get her to take it. So it's just a funny contrast. I just wanted to video that for a minute. But that doesn't mean two dogs might not fight over this. So if this dog has the bones, or I should say if Spartacus has the bone and, and uh, Athena comes by, or a child that can be get bit, there's a dog fight. You have to control food very, very carefully. Yep. Nice and relaxed. Baby. And then we're going this way. Yep. Nervous. Relax. Nice. Fast, slow. Go this way. Good. All right. I don't think we got. I mean, what else? There's nothing more we can do. We're not going nose to nose with the dog. It's impolite for me, as a human, to go nose to nose to another human. That's weird. So we got to respect space. And this is, can't get better than this. These two could be actually BFFs if we wanted them to be. This is up to you, the dog owner, to create these scenarios. Thank you. Okay, continuing with our training of Spartacus and Athena, we're starting to put it together where we can work the dogs together. But that takes time, so for the pet owners, they're gonna do one dog at a time until they're comfortable with each. Leash and collars are always on. She is relaxed. We're gonna give them some free time in our backyard so they can relieve themselves. She's gonna turn right. Good, good, good. She's gonna praise. You watch the dogs. This is very difficult because she's, each dog has a different personality and behavior, so she's correcting each dog individually. So this is a little advanced for most of the pet owners. Uh, we're gonna go right out onto the field. Good guys, hey, 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 good. So we make a lot of distractions. We're gonna let them run. We're finishing up our training. Here's Spartacus, Athena, things are really good. The most cautionary thing I will tell you at the conclusion of this training, Spartacus is food aggressive. That's why he, one of the reasons he came here, he will possess it. Children are the number one victims of dog bites. It's imperative that children, food, and Spartacus are not together at any time. You have to manage the dog around the food. You can go back to their side, pick up their leashes. Good, praise, nice. Tell them to heal and off you go. This is the way life should look regardless of triggers. So my biggest tail, the only person, the children, I always worry when you have big, powerful dogs. Big, powerful dogs who have a tendency of being possessive over food. So that's the conclusion. This was great. They just got a bath. Mom's coming by. Look at how she's relaxed. You can drop the leash a little, walk. Just drop them. And she walks. This is on the way to high school. On the way to high school. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Bye-bye. You can ask him to sit. All right, so here comes Ashley with the dogs. They're on her left side. She's relaxed. There is no tension on the leash. And she's going to make a right turn. And she's just we're just putting them. It's like dancing. They just can't be distracted. When they are, they got to get corrected. She's going to make a left and head towards the truck to get some groceries. She's gonna slow down. Just correct Spartacus, just Spartacus. Good, all right. She got nervous, you gotta be careful because you got two leashes. All right, stay. All right, that's good. And tell him, okay.
Help her a little. She just didn't know. All right. Okay, so we're finishing up our training. The rest is going to be in reinforcement. So now we're trying to work the dogs together. So let's see what happens. Ashley's on the other side of the gate. We have our two dogs. She walks with her left foot. They come together. Uh, then she's leaving. Okay. So when they're on their free time, this is their free time. That means they're free to do what they want within reason. Leash and collars are always on. Any bad behavior, barking at other dogs, jumping, will be corrected with the leash. Now they're running around. Uh, Spartacus, Peed, Athena, everybody's doing good. You see the dogs are happy. Ashley is going about her business. She's not interacting with the dogs. The dogs want to sniff the odor of the ground. That's what they enjoy doing. They want to smell who was out here before, the rabbits from last night, and this is what we do. And then we're going to take them inside again, and we're going to offer distractions. The trick is the pet owner has to get skilled at this, and only practice will work on this. Athena just peed, and that's it. I'm going to cut. Okay, so dogs are on the left. Ashley, and this is new. They, this is through consistency. This has only been about eight or nine days. So the dogs are a little, you know, but, but Ashley is, it's like relaxed. The dogs are relaxed. So she's going to head towards our truck just to mimic what you should be doing with your dogs. Everything is controlled. You can't go forward until you can do this. She's going to ask them to sit. Took a little time, Spartacus, to get it because he's excited about going in the truck. She's going to stay. She's going to open the door. And she's going to allow him to go in. There she goes. Let them work it out. Excellent. And then they're going to shut the door, obviously. And off we go. So it's simple. But the important point to know is that this takes time. The individual handler, the pet owner, the adult, has to figure this out and work one at a time, very simply. When they come to pick up the dogs, they'll, uh, Ashley's gonna give a, 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 a little lesson and we'll follow up with an in-home lesson. We're gonna cut and go inside for the final point to this is where they eat all their food, which is gonna be in their crate, period, end of story. All right, so now Ashley's coming home with the dogs after a long walk. They've been out in the field. See she, how she's relaxed. There's no pulling. They're actually passing by dog. Thor, she's going to stop there. The dogs will sit. Notice her body. There's no tension. If you put tension, everything goes back to the way it was. She praises the good behavior. I'm going to cut. Then we're going to come and mimic coming home to where they sleep at night. Okay, so we're going to mimic now, not mimic, the dogs are coming in, Ashley took them for a walk, they were out on the field, they peed, they pooped, now they're going to come home. When they come in to our home, we have a designated spot, it's their crates, we have them set up, uh, normally you'd have beds in there, obviously this is mimicking it. Uh, so, so Ashley's going to come, and the dogs have to go to the only place they're getting food is in their crate. So here she comes, the two of them. This is very confusing to dogs. She's going to ask uh, Spartacus, Spartacus first to go place. place. He's going to beeline. And then we have the other one. And watch, the only place they get food. So in this case, they're getting a little bit of a hot dog. A little piece of hot dog. Good, close the crates, lock the crates. That's the end of it. And then you go take your shower. The crates are used intermittently and randomly, meaning you just don't put them in there at bedtime. You don't put them in there when you're going out. You put them in there any time. It could be every five minutes, every five hours. It has to be random. And if you do this consistently, the food goes, that's it. No other food. These dogs, in Spartacus, they beelined it into it now. You can't even get them out. So that's something, you know, you'll work on. But first you want this behavior. Uh, the leashes come off when you're not supervising them. So obviously, we leave the leashes on now in case they bark or growl at each other, which they don't. But if they did, we just pick up the leash and correct them. Now Athena is going to take a nap. As I said, normally there'd be beds in there or whatever. And you put these crates somewhere out of the all the activity of the house. You don't want them in the living room. You don't want them in, in by the front door of the house. 
These crates should be put, their dens should be put in a place that's low drama, low activity, so they can relax. So all their needs are met in about 20 minutes. They were out, they peed, they pooped, they just ate, they're happy, they're secure, there's no worries, they can't bite any. If you're worried about a dog being aggressive towards food, this is the solution. They can't have bones, they don't have anything. We demonstrated yesterday with a bone, that was a demonstration. These things would be given to the dog inside their crate, never free, laying around free. If they're laying around and you don't realize it and a child or a person comes up to them, they can get bit by any dog who's possessing their food. Uh, all right, and that's it for today.